being up all night there isn't really much going on you know you guys sleep nights well most of you do and you know I'm up nights and most of the part of the day not most of the day but most of the morning I'm awake I did water the worm in it needed water and put some more cardboard on top so I didn't really bother filming that it's uh, draining right now out the bottom all the excess moisture and uh, checked on the flow through no worms yet up in the pumpkins but that's going to take a few days for that to start to decompose uh, tonight was about 26 degrees and we've got uh, icy patches around the area just had a three vehicle accident uh, just outside of town a little bit not many injuries couple minor ones but uh, yeah I guess winter is here seeing that we have icy roads um, first time this year and it, it can't be much maybe just a little bit of moisture on the road that iced over but um, because it hasn't been raining for over a day or more but could be the moisture you know seeping up from the ground from all the rain that we've been having and it froze that's probably where it's from um, I was going to take a look into the isopod bin remember we put that or or I put the pumpkin vines in there couple months ago I haven't looked in there so I think I'll give you guys a, a peek of that see what the isopods or roly-polies or potato bugs what whatever you want to call them and look at the pants bucket or pants container that I have the worms in I think that was like three four weeks ago I was supposed to show you and it's just spaced me so I think those two things we'll have a look at waiting for the sun to rise it's almost seven o'clock in the morning and there's a little bit of daylight out there but you know it's still uh, still kind of dark so let me bring in the isopod bin which is in the living room and uh, I have more light in here to film with so let me go grab that so both of these I haven't taken a look in so as I'm looking at it you're looking at it for the first time too since the last time so I'm not cheating I want to have the experience to see what it looks like and I can uh, not narrate but tell you a little bit of what's going on that I see um, since I've been you know doing this so the isopod bin is first it's at my feet and the lid is on so let's take the lid off and look so don't mind the lid is dirty okay so wow remember how it was all filled up Let me grab a flashlight here that is surprising this thing was plumb full of vines and that's what's left and I don't have the capture of what it used to look like if we go back maybe I'll link it I'll link it to about this section of the um, of where I put the vines in but that is amazing and every now and then you, you can see an isopod right right there he's right underneath or that one right there let's keep looking around there's one right there. Huh. 
hunt loses focus when I try. That's interesting. Every now and then you see some good sized ones around. Yeah, that's weird. It uh it comes out of focus. As I'm trying to give you a look around, I'm trying to look also. But that is composted a lot. And these isopods have like two straw like devices on their ass end. And that's how they drink. They don't drink through their mouth, they drink through like two straws. And this thing has lots of moisture. And I just spotted another one. Down here. Yeah, I don't like how that doesn't... It goes out of focus. Hmm. There's one right there. And that's just the few that I see up on top. And he's still there. So yeah, they drink out of the straw-like devices I was saying. Out of their ass end. Let me get my little fork I use and we'll turn over. Well, maybe not. I don't want to disturb them, but I'm seeing there's a few. There's some nice big ones. I'm not seeing any babies. That's Babies are like little specks with feet. I don't see. And what this this brown stuff is here? That's bark off off a tree. Um, this pe that's basically what's in here. Bark, and I've put grass and stuff and. It's all been composted, actually, except for the bark. I mean, if we look down here, that's almost compost, basically. That's, there's one cruising around down there. But that doesn't mean that there's lots of babies underneath. You know, they're just uh, where it's safe in the bin. That's where they usually are. Too bad I didn't have this turned on when I first flipped it over. There had to been over a hundred just in this area here. Ooh, and if you look down there. There's some babies right there, and it's not showing up that well. But yeah, as I turn this whole thing over, there it was just covered. That's a smaller one right there. But yeah, uh huh. They're thriving. I'm going to add some coffee grounds so they have something to eat in here. Because right now they don't really have much to eat at all. And all of those guys, the isopods that were in this area, went to the right. And are buried underneath there. I um, guess they don't like the light too much. But yeah, that surprised me. At least a hundred. I mean, this whole thing was covered underneath here. 
and they all dar darted like roaches. Yeah. It was funny to watch it. So let me go get some coffee grounds and I'll spread those around. So I added coffee grounds to the top and then when where I saw all those underneath this piece of bark added a couple scoops under there. Just happened to see one cruising on top here. And there he goes. So yeah, that's impressive. And I'm already seeing babies. One right there. And I can't zoom now. He just darted underneath. But um, yeah. Very impressive to see how many there are in this. And all I do is feed them coffee grounds and potatoes. The pumpkin vine, what's left of it, was just uh, an experiment to see. And as you can see, it's gone. It's not much left of that. So, a couple more. Yeah, I know I could show you guys this all day. You know, it amazes me watching them. They're craw crawling around, seeing all this new food that's in there. And with the new food should be an influx of more uh, reproduction. So, that is the isopod bin. I hope you're, you were amazed as much as I was. Trying to look to see where others are coming out, but uh, there was one crawling right there. So, yeah, you know, as I said, I could watch this all day. And those who were into raising isopods could watch this too, because they're amazing little creatures for what they are and what they do, you know, to make nice compost like that stuff down there. Sometime I'll have to clean this. I'm not too sure how or when or why, but, or maybe just leave it like it is. But I'm thinking to put all this into a bin for the worms to eat through. And then the worms will, once it goes through the worm's body, it will be five to eight times better than what it is now. Passing through a worm will do that to any compost. And let's have a look into the pants bin that I showed you. I put co the coffee grounds in the corner and I'm opening up so we both have the first look. Initially that's moist in there. I could tell just sticking my finger in there it was moist. Taking some of this away. And let me bring the light in. And huh. Guess what? I don't see anything. <laughs> okay. I see a pot worm. Uh, pot worms are Okay, there's one worm. So not all is lost. There's one worm right there. So, I thought I'd see a lot more into the coffee grounds. Pot worms are just little worms that appear when there's lots of food or lots of moisture 
and then uh, they disappear when the moisture or food is no longer and I'm seeing okay I am seeing movement in the coffee grounds itself there is a worm in there no it's not okay those are I know the camera's not picking them up those are mites not mites um, mites? I'm thinking they're mites they're copper colored usually they're white that's what's moving around in there but that's normal too they're they're all over so there's no worms in in the coffee grounds I didn't it, I didn't expect them to be in their food and there goes a worm just over the side so they're up in this cardboard the uh, egg crates I put egg crates in here and there's a few in there bigger size than what they were and as I stated when I first did this they're just cocoons so all these babies and well these are fully adult worms almost that are that are grown just out of cocoons there was not a single worm in here uh, probably a couple dozen cocoons that I started out with this let me look around on the outside of the bin and see what activity that I see as I'm looking I'm not too sure what I'm seeing it looks like a bunch either a bunch of babies or a bunch of pot worms I'm not really sure but I did see a few worms moving around in this I think most of those are pot worms well, there's a few there's a few worms down in there I'm trying to angle this bucket up so you can get a look at it so there are a few worms more than I would have thought and they're growing so once they you know keep growing these will grow into adults and then they will reproduce and lay cocoons in here and I bet if I looked around digging through all of it which I'm not going to do I'll probably find cocoons somewhere in there so I just spotted a worm right there as you can see in the coffee grounds so he's in the food itself there's no bedding in there He's to the right of the cardboard. He looks shiny. That's as best as I can describe where he is. So yeah, there's quite a few worms in this. And I don't know what generation all these worms are. If they're first, second, they could be third generation by now. But I'd I say take a guess it would be second generation if there were any cocoons that have um, hatched by now so yeah that's a look of the pants bin that worms are living in and plus a little bit of egg crate up top just that was a safe safe zone in case the worms didn't like the pants that they could live in the egg crates also because I wasn't too sure when I started this of how the pants were going to act for bedding but uh, they seem to be all over the container I've seen worms in the bottom crawling around in the pants itself 
So thanks for watching this. And the day isn't over. We'll have to see what else happens, if anything, during today. So I just went outside to collect all the buckets of rainwater that I had out there. If you remember from the other day, I put out buckets, all sorts of buckets. And probably gathered 40 to 50 gallons. Surprisingly, all of the buckets had at least about an inch or more of water and ice. It got down to 26 last night. And I filled up um, a few 10 gallon buckets. Um, a rubber made uh, tote. An 18 gallon rubber made tote uh, halfway. Um, some more in another, another tote. So that was a good haul for uh, a couple days rain. I think the official was like 1.51 inches. Uh, it could have been more. But uh, yeah, that wasn't too bad. Uh, just throwing out the buckets. And that wasn't even in the beginning of the storm either. That was um, halfway through the first night. That went all, I'll throw some out and see what I get. And uh, so yeah, that'll last me a little bit. Depends how much, you know, the bins use and everything uh, for water. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching today. Hopefully you enjoyed the isopods and the, what else did I show you? Oh, the other pants uh, container. And uh, hopefully you come back tomorrow and see what happens. I don't know. I go from day to day and see what happens and see what comes up or see what I feel like showing you or doing or, or whatever. Uh, I've got a few things planned, but not day to day. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new, subscribe. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up uh, so I know at least you watched it and you liked it.